last but not least in this jam-packed two episode special is of course the headlining case of Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie. Now I wanted to mention all the other cases before I got to this one because let's face it, even if you're not really following the case, if you have Instagram, if you have Twitter, you would have heard about the case or at least what's going on with it, what ended up happening. So I didn't want to make their case the main focus of this two episode special, but since, you know, all these bodies were found because of them, it's only fair to pay homage and include their story as well. Like I said, she is the reason why all these aforementioned people were found to begin with. So although this is as horrible as it can get, she was a silver lining for these people people's families to finally know peace and have closure. So Gabby was a travel blogger who was doing a cross-country road trip with her fiancé, 23-year-old Brian Laundrie, and the two had been posting their journey on Instagram and on their YouTube channel Nomadic Static. The couple had been together for two and a half years and got engaged in July of 2020. Now before embarking on their journey, Gabby had been living with Brian's parents in Northport, Florida for the past year. Now the couple set off on their trip in June and by July 10th they had reached Duncan, Colorado. Two weeks later, they had reached Utah. It was August 12th when things took a wrong turn. Police responded to an incident regarding Gabby and Brian because apparently they had been involved in some kind of physical argument. Witnesses claimed they saw Brian slapping and hitting Gabby before getting into his van and driving off. Now, I listened to a podcast that released the recordings of what Brian was saying to the officers when they got there, and he was basically just saying that he was pushing Gabby away because he was angry, and so was she, and he didn't want to escalate the fight further, so he kept pushing her away. Now, Gabby actually admitted to slapping him, and so he was pushing her so he wouldn't do something that he regretted. Now, the couple were talked to separately, and Gabby was talking to the officers amongst sobs, like, you can hear it, but there was just nothing that could justify any criminal charge and so the couple was just let go and I really wish they hadn't been because maybe Gabby would have been alive today. We then fast forward to the 24th of August, the last day Gabby was seen alive checking out of a hotel in Salt Lake City. However, the last time anyone actually heard from Gabby was the next day. She spoke to her mom Nicole and told the rest of the travel plan and how the couple were on their way to some national parks in Wyoming. There were two texts sent from Gabby's phone after that day, but honestly, at this point, after all we already know, those texts were most likely sent by Brian and not Gabby at all. A girl called Nina Angelo claimed she saw Gabby and Brian have a huge fight on the 27th of August at a restaurant in Wyoming and the manager also said that Brian was going in and out of the restaurant multiple times, he was being rude to staff, he was just disruptive overall. Now on the 29th, a woman called Miranda Baker apparently gave Brian a ride. He told her that he'd been camping alone the past few days while Gabby worked on their social media stuff in the van. He got out of the Baker's car near the Jackson Dam and another local dropped him to Spread Creek. The last text from Gabby was received on the 30th of August and it read, No service in Yosemite. Convenient. On September 1st, Brian finally returned home to Florida in Gabby's van, but Gabby was nowhere to be found. He also refused to speak to law enforcement about where Gabby was, so on the 11th, her family reported her as missing. When police went to LaLaundrie's house, Brian's parents gave them their lawyer's number, and that was that. No communication, no nothing. Now on the 13th, Brian apparently goes for a hike in the Carlton Reserve and by the 15th, Brian was named the number one person of interest in his fiancée's disappearance. For many reasons, including the fact that he was the last one to see her and the fact he'd refused to help investigators or even be interviewed. I mean, for crimes of passion, if you're not the killer, you're trying to do everything you can to figure out where your significant other is or what happened to them. Now in a plot twist turn of events, two days later, Brian Brian's family calls law enforcement to report Brian is missing, since they hadn't seen him since the 14th. The search for both began the next day at a Florida wildlife reserve, while FBI continued the search in Denver. On the 19th, skeletal remains were found in the campgrounds of Grand 
Cheetah National Park, where the van was last spotted in public. And two days later, a coroner confirmed that the remains did in fact belong to Gabby and that the cause of death was homicide. Further autopsy reports from October concluded that she was strangled and on the 23rd, an arrest warrant was issued for Brian, but he was still MIA. Now on the 20th of October, a month later, police officers found more human remains where they were looking for Brian. It could have been anyone, but they also found a notebook and backpack nearby that actually belonged to him. The next day, their worst fears were confirmed when it was concluded that the remains were Brian's. So now we've lost the girl and we've lost the prime murder suspect, but most likely the murderer. And now that is the end of our two episodes special, you guys. I know usually I go into a lot of detail on one case and I kind of went into like mid-range to like little detail into all these cases. But honestly, because of the lack of coverage on these cases, there's just really not that much found about the victims, their families, or even the circumstances of how they disappeared. But obviously there's just so, so much information about Gabby and Brian. I had two options. Either I could have just done Gabby and Brian's case, which probably would have gotten views because it's going viral right now. But I was like, everyone already knows. Like why add more information to a case everybody already knows about and it's kind of concluded. Like let's bring light to these people who are not given the time of day. And I hope this helped them in some way. I hope I brought some good do this video. My heart goes out to every single victim in this video and you know their families. I don't, I can't even imagine what you guys are going through. But yes, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!